there, Pamela Cady here, and uh, hopefully my audio is working. I have a new set of earbuds here. We're trying them out. So um, I wanted to hop on today and um, have just actually, I wanted to share my story with you. Um, and so I really titled this, you know, how does a suppressed wounded shadow artist overcome fear and self doubt to launch a debut album of original guitar compositions? You know, as you may or may not know, um, Joyful Journey Instrumental Music to Relax the Mind and Lift the Spirit was just officially released on June 3rd. And it's been quite a journey to actually um, birth that project into the world. I started recording it in March of 2004 and it's finally unleashed in the world. It took 15 years. So I wanted to come on and share with you, like, you know, the backstory of um, my creative self and what it's taken for me to actually accomplish this huge goal in my life. So I've always been a healer, you know, and that's why I was I was, that's why I was led into getting a master's degree in counseling psychology and then later drawn into being a massage therapist and natural therapeutic specialist and then coming full circle in um, becoming a transformational life empowerment coach for smart, ambitious, creative women, you know, who want to break free of the fear and self-doubt that are holding them back from accomplishing their most meaningful goals in life. And so before all of that um, formal education on career paths, um, I was just a little girl who loved playing music. And I started playing the accordion when I was about eight years old. And I actually loved it. I loved practicing every day. I loved going to lessons every week. And I loved performing for my family. And I, I felt fully self-expressed when I had music flowing through me. And I, you know, I personally believe as humans that we are never closer to the divine than when we are creating and expressing our creative self. So I started accordion when I was at age eight. And when I was about 11 or 12 years old, I'm not really clear about the exact age, right? I had a friend come over to my house um, we were just starting a friendship and she came over with three other girls and I didn't I didn't know the other three girls and I barely knew this girl that was starting to become my friend um, but anyway so we were in my family room and they found out that I played accordion and so they were like wow that's cool plays a song and so I was like all right and uh, so I busted out my accordion, you know, got it all unsnapped and grabbed the sheet music to my most favorite song that I love to play because it was really fast and I could play it really well and put it on the music stand. I was all set up. And then I uh, proceeded to bust out playing this polka with the passion of a rock star, right? And so these four girls are like standing there in my living room, like watching me and they like listened for a while, right? They listened intently for a while and then they started like whispering amongst themselves and I honestly don't know if they were talking about me or not but I remember just this flush of shame and embarrassment like washing over me you know I just felt like embarrassed that I was like fully unabashedly expressing my creative self and when the song ended, um, you know, I pushed the air out of the bellows of my accordion and snapped it closed and put it in the case and closed the lid. And about the same time that those four, four girls were leaving my house, my dad got home from work. And um, when he walked through the door, I asked him, um, would you tell mom that I don't want to play accordion anymore. And he looked at me really shocked and surprised and he said, are you sure? And I said, yes. And I turned around and I walked to my bedroom 
And my mother and I never discussed discussed it afterward, but we stopped going to accordion lessons every week. So I assumed that my dad had the conversation with her. Um, so that was the end of that musical journey. And then when I was in middle school, um, it was probably about a, like a year later, right? Um, the, uh, the salesman came for the band instruments and, um, but he sold us a trombone, right? So like, I knew I didn't want to play the clarinet. My older brother had a clarinet and I, I don't know, I didn't really like it. And, but I saw the flute and I was like, man, I want to play the flute. And he was like, you can't play the flute because of the shape of your lips. And then back in my mind, I'm thinking, what the fuck? What is he talking about? <laughs> and so I didn't get a flute, but uh, I ended up with a trombone. <laughs> I was the only girl that played the trombone and there was only two of us that played the trombone. And uh, so I was like in middle school band for like less than a year. And, um, but the trombone actually was, it was actually a pretty cool instrument, right? Cause there was like no buttons to push and no keys to push. And like, you just had to like find the notes, you know, and it, it, that sliding thing, you know, those slurs, man, the slurs were actually pretty cool. But but I wasn't that enamored with it because by that time I knew I wanted to play guitar and I wanted to play guitar bad. And, um, but I didn't think that I had the right to ask my parents for a guitar because I'd quit playing trombone before they even paid it off and I'd quit playing accordion. So I didn't get my first guitar until I was 25 years old. And I taught myself how to play it at first um, from books before um, getting real guitar lessons. And six months into playing it, I was writing my own songs, music and lyrics. And I couldn't sing very, very well at the time, but that didn't stop me from trying to execute what I could hear in my head, right? Because playing guitar and writing music, it brought me really just enormous joy. And so fast forward about eight years, I was working full time as a massage therapist in private practice. And I was really particular about the type of music that I like to listen to for massage and what seemed like the most relaxing music for my clients. I never liked um, synthesizer music that like Steve Halpern was putting out for massage music. Uh, I didn't like how ethereal and ungrounded it felt. I just never really liked synth music. Um, I just always loved really organic instrumentation and acoustic guitar in particular. And what I also noticed that was the most relaxing and meditative and inflow music that I liked for massage seemed to be in the same key and it was repetitive. There was just something about those two elements that just, it, it's like this lulling. It's like this lull that you just get to like relax inside of. Like there's no surprises or anything to um, jolt you, you know? So I find that people would go really deep. And so in 2002, I was sitting at my dining room table reading an article in Guitar Player Magazine and there was this open tuning mentioned in it that I had never heard of before. And I've always loved open tuning. So I grabbed my guitar and retuned the strings right then and there and out poured the song Gypsy Journey, which is on my album. And it came out whole and complete in one sitting. And I just instantly, fell in love with this magical droning tuning and more and more songs came out and they came out quickly. And so my former husband, Joe Gagan, who was a professional musician, he was over to my apartment one day and he was using my computer, sitting at my computer desk, using my computer. And I was playing these songs on my guitar and he was really enjoying listening to them. And and then at one point you just like spun around in his chair and he said, you should make a CD. And I had had that thought too, of really recording these songs for um, massage music. And, but there was this dialogue in the back of my head 
that was, you know, yapping, you're not good enough. No one would want to listen to you. You can't make a CD. You're not a professional musician. And those limiting beliefs would win for the better part of a year. And then one day I came home from work feeling completely burnt out and dissatisfied with my life um, and really questioning, you know, is this it? Is this all there is to life? I just feel like I'm existing to work and pay bills. And I was really ready for a change. So I had registered for a personal growth and development workshop that was focused on life direction and purpose. And during that workshop, we did um, a really intensive full body exercise followed by sitting in silence. And I heard spirit say to me, heal the world through music. And right then and there, I knew it was time for me to record these songs and make a CD. And so out of that workshop, before I left, I made a three step plan. And step one was to ask Joe, my former husband, to be my producer. And the second step was to schedule time at um, John's studio in Santa Fe. John Gagan is um, Joe's brother, my former brother-in-law. And the third step was to buy a metronome. And before I left that workshop, I made a commitment to completing those three actions in the next 48 hours. And the first action, I actually called Joe and told him about my experience and what I wanted to do and asked him to be my producer. I actually completed that action before I even left the workshop. So that was the first commitment of making it happen, right? And the journey started off amazing. I remember the first day after recording in the studio, going into work the next day feeling the most peaceful I've ever felt in my whole life. It was as if my soul was at rest. I don't know if you've ever had that experience before. It was the first time I'd ever had that experience of feeling like my soul was at rest. And originally, the album was going to be all solo acoustic guitar. But after laying down all the guitar tracks, we started to hear other instrumentation to add. So um, my sound engineer, John Gagan, we recorded at John Gagan's studio in Santa Fe, the electric company, who's, he, you know, he's like a three-time Grammy-nominated and platinum-selling artist, right? He recorded all the bass tracks, laid down these amazing, groovy, dynamic bass tracks that are just incredible. And then my former husband, Joe, he recorded all the electric guitar parts and he's playing his guitar through his guitar pedals that he um, makes and designs and manufactures and creates and sells all over the world. And we brought in Mark Clark, Clark um, who's a drummer and percussionist who also lives in Santa Fe. Um, he recorded um, tribal percussion like Udu and Doombeck and Cajon and some other percussive colors and flourishes on the album. And then years later, um, we added uh, cello on a couple songs. So before I knew it, my music project, my simple little solo acoustic guitar project <laughs> had turned into something way more bigger and more expansive and even more beautiful than I ever could have imagined. And the whole experience was in flow. And I felt completely blessed and in awe, like every step of the way. It was just magical and amazing. And then I made some changes in my career that impacted my finances. And before I knew it, I was out of money. And so there was no longer funds to make something as frivolous as making a music CD, right? And the, the negative limiting beliefs came creeping back in. I'm not a professional musician. I don't have any fans. Who would ever want to buy this? How am I ever going to sell this, right? And I would spend the next eight years like struggling and 
struggling with the limiting beliefs about that and struggling to make the money to complete the project itself instead of just focusing on completing the project. And so in 2015, um, I had the idea to start a kick funder cap, a, a kick funder. Hmm, that's a new one. I had the idea to start a Kickstarter campaign and to crowdfund the remaining funds needed to complete the project. And I thought it was a great idea because it was basically pre-selling the music, right? And so it was a win-win. And every day for 30 days straight, I mean, I've never done anything like this before in my life. Every day for 30 days straight, I flew out of bed to share about the project. And people started pledging their support with their words and their wallets. And they were telling me that they liked the music and couldn't wait to hear the whole CD. And like there was all this activity around my creative self-expression, right? And it, it gave me... Um, the validation to keep going every day because people were responding. And during that time period, I had actually found out that um, an artist friend of mine who's a painter, he had um, he had copied um, a CD of rough tracks from like near the very beginning and had been listening to them for years. And he would listen to them before he started painting to get into the zone. And like, I never knew that, right? I was like, wow, are you kidding me? And um, so when the 30 days were up on that original Kickstarter crowdfunding campaign, I had only achieved 39% funding on an all or nothing campaign, which meant it failed. I got none of the funds, my backers pledged, and they got nothing either. And so, what I did learn from that experience was that people liked the music and they wanted to hear the whole album and they were willing to pay for it. And I also noticed that I was feeling more alive and on purpose sharing about my creative self-expression and process. And I started to believe again that art matters and that music matters and that I matter. And once is that feeling and that belief faded over the following, over the course of the following four years. And I started to lose faith in myself and my music. And I tried to conform to what I thought others thought I should be doing instead of doing what there was for me to do. And I think a lot of us do that. You know, after all, who was I to go after a dream? And I gradually killed off my creative until yet again, I found myself in the pit of despair, trying to create success through some other means instead of just focusing on the project that there was to complete. And then last fall, a fateful moment happened for me. I was in, um, I was on a coaching video session with two business coaches and three other participants. They were all women. I didn't, um, I had just met all of them. I didn't know. Them. And one of the coaches asked me, if you had all the money you needed, what would you do? How would you spend your time? And I immediately broke down sobbing. And I said, the most important thing to me is completing my music project and unleashing it into the world. Because if I die without completing it, I will feel as if my life was pointless. And she just softly said to me, well, that's what there is to do then. And I just really sat with that, like, yeah, that's all there is to do. And yes, it kicked up fear, a lot of fear, a lot of the limiting self-talk got driven up, but there was this bigger piece of me that knew that 
if it's the most important thing and you're going to die on your deathbed feeling incomplete about it, it's the thing to do, right? And so when I made the journey, the priority, all the other areas of my life that weren't working started to work. I magically attracted ideal coaching clients from completely unexpected places. I synchronistically met the perfect people with the perfect skills to complete the next piece of the project. And I started to feel more in flow with every step as I got back into alignment with my creative self. And I started to experience the same level of joy and peace as when I first started the music project. And what's most interesting to me about this journey is that it's the same for all of us. You know, we all have something special inside of us that is meant to be expressed in the world. And if we don't, we're left feeling unfulfilled and dissatisfied and tolerating an existence of mediocrity. Now, my mission in life is to inspire the experience of peace and passionate aliveness in others so that they can feel whole, happy, and fully self-expressed. And the music on Joyful Journey, instrumental music to relax the mind and lift the spirit is completely in alignment with my mission. And so it's completely my honor and privilege to say that this project is finally complete and unleashed into the world. And if you would like some high vibe music to put on and feel good, or you're feeling anxious, stressed, or worried, and would love some music to help calm and soothe you, I really invite you to go sign up to receive three free songs from the album. You can find it at PamelaKatieMusic.com. Until next time, peace.